What's up, party people and magic makers? Destiny here on this magical Monday. I know I'm a little bit early. Um, however, I have another appointment at my normal video time. So I thought, hey, you know, why not? Um, if you are here, it is because I am doing a weekly mindset video. So every Monday I go live talking about mindset. Um, if you have any questions, please post them below. If you know anybody that uh, would love to see this video or you're like, oh, so-and-so sh should see this, go ahead and share it with them. Um, the more the merrier on this lovely magical Monday. All right, so today I wanted to talk about energetic addictions. This is not mine. I learned this from an amazing, amazing woman named Corey Michelle. She dives into this. However, I do use this in a lot of my coaching sessions um, because it pops up. So I wanted to chat with you about it because we are all addicted to a very particular type of energy and that energy is usually what we grew up in, okay? So if you grew up in a house where there was a lot of frustration and anger, that can actually feel safe to you or comfortable to you because you know it. Does that make sense? If you grew up in a household where it was happy and joyful, uh, that energy is what you are addicted to and you, you know it, it's safe, it's comfortable for you. So what then happens is we create more opportunities, more events, more things that will bring us what we are addicted to and what we are attracted to and the things that we're like, ooh, that feels good. So if you grew up in that household with anger and frustration and you are presented with option A, where it will bring you anger and frustration, or option B, where it will bring you happiness and excitement and joy, we are going to choose option A because it's the thing that we know and we're like, oh, that one, okay? If we grew up in the other household with the joy and the happiness and the excitement, we will choose option B because we're like, oh yeah, I know that one. That one's familiar to me. That one's comfortable to me. I want that one. So if we break this down and we think about this, if we are going to go after the things that we, are, that we feel comfortable about, the, the things that feel comfortable to us, the things that we're like, oh yeah, I know what that is. That, that's the one I want to go to. What are we then creating for ourselves? And is that what we want to create? I know for me, I'm the first one. I will choose ch option A, right? It will be an absolutely beautiful and amazing opportunity, but it will be filled with anger and frustration and irritation, right? So because I know that though, I know that I can do something different, okay? However, if you don't know it, then it, then you're just doing this unconsciously and it's got you, right? So first things first, what do you need to do to undo all of this? Because what if you wanna choose the stuff that's amazing and, and fun and adventurous, right? And instead of option A, what, what if you wanna choose option B? So the first thing first is you need to know what your energetic addiction is, okay? What is the thing that you feel, and it may not feel comfortable as far as like what everybody else thinks, but if you get real honest with yourself, you're like, yep, I do this a lot. I feel this a lot. Some people choose into anxious, right? They feel anxiety a lot. They worry a lot. So it always brings up their anxiety. Some people feel depressed because they're sad. They grew up in a very sad household or maybe not even a household, right? Just some, pe some kids in the foster system, it's just sad, right? And so that's what they know. And so it feels like, oh, I know what that is. I, I, that feels like this feels good to me because I've known it for so long, except it, it sucks. It sucks so bad, right? So identifying what your energetic addiction is, how do you do that? Well, go ahead. Just last week, I put up those, those charts in the emoji faces, right? Start, start there. What are you feeling? What are the things that, that you feel in either the emoji chart or in that, that wheel the most often? Just look at it. What do you feel the most often? For me, it's the frustration. 
and the anger it, that's the go-to that's that's the one i know it's the it's the one right and so i know it so when i start like feeling it i'm like hang on this is an addiction this is my addiction so i get to now now that i recognize it and i know what it feels like and i know when i'm starting to feel it i can ask do i want to participate this or not <clears throat> Because is there, are there ways to make something that's frustrating not frustrating? Yes. I can ask for support. I can ask for help. Right? I can look at something and go, do I really need to do this? Or can I have someone else do this? Right? Do, what, what can I do so that I don't have to feel this frustration? And just asking that question is really super expansive. Okay? So you've got to identify what you're feeling. Identify like when you're feeling it, like, is there something in particular? Is there something that sets it off? Right? And then start asking yourself questions. How can I change this? How can I make this different? Do I want to participate in this? Can I get out of doing this? And lo and behold, it starts happening. So I was at one of Corey Michelle's events in November where I found out that mine is the frustration and the anger and I can feel it. I'm like, I'm stuck. And I, I will say it. I'm like, I am freaking frustrated. Right? And then I'm like, oh, wait, I'm frustrated. Hang on. Do I have to participate in this? Do I have to move forward in this? Do I, like, do I want to? And if the answer is yes, it's yes. If the answer is no, I can do so many other things with that energy. So many other things, right? And the other thing, too, is, like, now that energy can get cleared, right? It can just, you can clear it. And just keep clearing it and keep clearing it and keep moving it out and away until pretty soon it doesn't have the hold on you that it normally does. And you're also not creating new evidence for it to keep having its hold on you. So it's this beautiful working from both ends thing, right? Clear the energy from the past and all of that and clearing the energy now and pretty soon when, it, when they both catch up with each other, it's like, wait, no, I can choose out. And that's so super powerful is being able to choose out. Because a lot of people are choosing into their energetic addictions, right? And so it's like, well, does that serve you? I don't think it does. It makes you freaking sick. It makes you tired. It makes you really hard to deal with with other people. Like, you just don't want to. And it's just, it's this vicious cycle. And so we get to stop and go, wait a minute. Is this a cycle that I want to keep going? Because you can say no. You can 100% say no, and that's the beauty of this. Once you know your energetic addiction, you can tell it to F off, and like, you're like, beat it, I don't want it, next. And you can like, utilize that energy that you have for something amazing, and something that'll move you forward, and something that like, feels really yummy and juicy to you, but that might be scary, because that's not where you're, you're, you're like, but wait, what about this, right? But that's the perfect place to be in because if you're not getting what you want because of an energetic addiction, it's time to fucking get rid of it. It's not serving you anymore. So stop it. Stop it. Right? If you have any questions on how to do that, how to do the clearing for yourself, how to identify, let me know. I'm happy to support you in this. I'm ha like, this is the kind of stuff that I'm like, yes, it's so yummy for me, right? So ask your questions. I'm happy to answer them. And um, kick ass this week. Like, do that thing that you wanted to do and, and start moving it around and, like, feeling yummy and juicy about what's going on for you. Like, really dive into that, all right? Okay, until next week. Peace.